now, may the children come to the front. Hey. Hey there. Do you know what special day it is today? Valentine's Day. Well, yes, it is Valentine's Day. I mean, though, special day in the church. St. Valentine's Day? <laughs> yes, I suppose it is. And? Oh, Transfiguration Day. Yes, today is Transfiguration Sunday. And on this particular Transfiguration Sunday, we tell the story not only of Jesus going up the mountain, uh, we'll get to that, but we also tell the, the story in the Old Testament of Elijah and Elisha. Oh. Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Wait a minute, that was their names? Sounds like the same name. Are they twins? Uh, no. Both prophets. Just kind of a coincidence, their names are so similar. Anyway. Elijah said to Elisha, I'm going to go on ahead. You stay here. But Elisha said, nah, -uh, no, no way. Nope, 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 nope. You will always be with me. So Elijah sighed and they went down to Bethel. Wait, when does St. Valentine show up? Uh, he doesn't. So the company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yeah, I know. Be quiet. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, uh, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Oh, was he going to go shopping for Valentine's Day? Um, no. But Elisha said, no, -uh, no way. Nope, 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 nope. You'll always be with me. Now, the company of prophets who were at Jericho, they came by and they said, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Stop rubbing it in. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan River, and I don't want you to get your sandals all soggy. But Elisha said, Nuh uh, no way, nope. Nope, 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 nope. You'll always be with me. Then Elijah sighed and took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water parted to the one side and to the other until the two crossed on dry ground. And when they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, You know, I'm going to be leaving, and I just didn't know how to say goodbye. And Elisha said, I know. And then Elijah said, is there anything you want before I go? And Elijah said, I'd like some Valentine's Day chocolate. No, he asked for something much more meaningful. Elijah said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. And Elijah said, if God lets you see me as I'm being taken away from you, then the double spirit thing you asked for will be granted. And if not, that's tough. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel! But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Whoa! So Elijah went straight to heaven, never to be seen again? Uh, well, partly right. I mean, he did go straight into heaven, but he did come back once when Jesus was on the mountaintop. But you can listen for that in today's gospel reading. Okay. Now can I have some chocolate? Yes. But first, let's pray. Thank you, God, you sent your son. Thank you, God, you sent your son. A light so all can see. A light so all can see. Just how much you care for us. Just how much you care for us. Each person just like me. Each person just like me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for teaching us all about Elijah and Elisha and Transfiguration Sunday and St. Valentine's Day. And now you're welcome to go to Sunday school.
now let us pray the collect of the day. Almighty God, on the holy mount you revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured. Mercifully deliver us from the shade of this world and change us into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Elisha asks Elijah, Please let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. His request is granted. In accepting his master's earthly life has passed, Elijah finds within himself everything he needs to carry on the prophetic work. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, verse 1. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gigal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I'm taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching, crying out, Father, Father! the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not I love thee, O my Lord? Behold my heart and see. And turn each cursed idol out that dares to rival thee. Do not I love thee from my soul, then let me nothing love. Dead be my heart to every joy when Jesus cannot move. Thou knowst I love thee, dearest Lord, but, oh, I long to soar far from the sphere of mortal joys and learn to love thee more. Far from the sphere of mortal joys and learn to love thee more. Paul reflects on our limitations using the image of light and shadow. Even when the gospel is not seen clearly, 
God brings light and clarity. God made light shine in the darkness in the first creation and continues to do so in the new creation of Christ. Second reading is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of the world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is God who said, let light shine out of darkness. Who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark, the ninth chapter beginning at the second verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up to a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He does not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them 
anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be entrusted to your care, O God. Amen. When my father was first ordained as a priest, he became an assistant at the cathedral in London, Ontario. And our family came to the cathedral one Sunday morning including my niece, Jennifer, who was quite young at the time. She had never been in the cathedral and was quite taken with this enormous room with so many things to look at. After the service, while we waited at the back of the cathedral for my father, people left and the cathedral became empty. And Jennifer looked down at the tile floor, all the squares of tile, big tiles, going down the aisle. And suddenly, the room made sense to her. Standing on one foot, she hopped to the next tile on the floor, and then the next. Of course, <laughs> the tile floor was for hopscotch or so she thought. Hop after hop, she made her way up to the front of the church, up the chancel steps. And then she stopped and looked up at the apse, the ceiling above the altar. With her mouth open, she took it all in. And she turned and in a very loud voice, she called back to us, you should see the view from up here. Now, on the top of Mount Tabor, surrounded by trees, there is a little church with a beautiful view, built where many believe the transfiguration occurred. The story from our gospel reading today. Quite far away from that, in Egypt, there's a monastery on the sloping base of Mount Sinai. This monastery does not have a beautiful view. In fact, it's really out of place. It looks like a fortress, but there's no other buildings there, just mountain and sand. On the ceiling of the monastery chapel, above the altar, 
is one of the world's most beautiful mosaics, made entirely of little squares of cut glass. A picture of Jesus at the Transfiguration. I don't know what was more work, building a fortress far off in the desert or building this mosaic. The mosaic is huge. To look at it in a picture doesn't do it justice. It completely covers the ceiling above the altar. And just as a comparison, this enormous apse there, even if you were to make a similar mosaic in our relatively smaller space here, it would take, you would need to cut 200,000 little pieces of colored glass. And each square of glass above the altar is careful, carefully placed to make a picture. Each square is deliberately placed at a slightly different angle so that it reflects light in a different direction. And the finished product, when you stand beneath it, I'm told it is breathtaking. Brilliant gold and blue and red colors with Christ in the center almost seeming to glow as he did in our gospel reading today. Now, after 1,500 years, the mosaic in the church at Mount Sinai had grown dim. It had become covered with a layer of thick, oily soot from the oil lamps in the church, as well as then the dust and dirt from the desert around. And by the year 2000, the once vibrant mosaic was so dim that the pictures were almost not visible. It seems symbolic to me. We are living in an age when the average person has trouble seeing the brilliance of Christ working in the hearts of people. The image of Christ has been covered with the soot of violence perpetrated in the name of God. It has lost its color and become dim with the simplistic black and white interpretations of God's will, loud and outspoken points of view that claim that God is vengeful and merciless. The mosaic has become dim. And this mosaic at Sinai also had water damage, had eroded the wall behind the image of Christ. And by the time a team of experts was sent in to do repairs, the entire image of Christ was on the verge of separating from the ceiling and crumbling into fragments on the floor below. Fortunately, the beauty of that church has now been restored. Sometimes it takes moments of awe and glory to restore our faith. Sometimes we have moments like the disciples did on the top of the mountain, moments of awe and wonder. We take a moment and we see our lives from a new, wondrous perspective. My niece seemed to be having one of those moments that day as she stood at the front of the cathedral looking around in awe and wonder. And my mother was there, and I don't think she had ever seen anyone use the cathedral for hopscotch. But my mom had the idea to use hopscotch as the way to coax my niece to the back of the cathedral again so we could all leave. She said, Jennifer, to play hopscotch properly, you don't just finish at the last square and stay there. Instead, to finish the game, you turn around and you hop back out. This is just like church, she said. We come here for the church service, but then we have to go back 
outside again to show God's love to the world. While we live our lives on earth, we have experiences of wonder and awe that are like my niece's experience at the front of the church. And from time to time, we have experience of God that is like the final semicircle, that part of the church we call the apse before turning around. Like being in the apse of the church, and the word apse, when translated, means embrace. These times when we feel we are embraced by God. Times when we feel at peace and know that God is with us. But like children playing hopscotch, we don't stay there. We must turn around and take this experience with us back into the world. And when Jesus was transfigured, the disciples wanted to build tents and stay there. But after they saw Jesus in his glory, Jesus brought them back down the mountain to be among the people again. When we gather in worship, though physically now we are in our homes, blessed be the tie that binds. We are tied together in God's love as the Christian community, worshiping together. But let's take a moment and imagine when we worship in this space as we look forward to doing again when it is safe to do so. We enter through the narthex. We remember our baptism as we journey into the church and see the font. We follow life's journey to the saving grace of Christ at the altar. And we gaze up at the apse, the embrace of God above us, and are reminded of the glory that awaits us. And as our Sunday service concludes, then we go back out into the world to live and to love. Now, regardless of where we are as we're worshiping right now, our worship involves this spiritual movement. And this is the meaning of the transfiguration for us as Christians. We are those who have seen the bright glory of God, felt the embrace of God in our hearts, and carry this experience with us spiritually every time we worship, anywhere we worship. Praise be to God for times when we glimpse the glory of Christ. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O Christ, your followers saw you shine with glory on the mountain. Today we see you shine in more subtle ways, a kindness done for the sake of kindness or a moment of peace in the midst of life's chaos, or something of beauty that moves our hearts for a moment. Day by day, help us to see you shine with glory. May these experiences strengthen our faith so that we may reflect some of the light of Christ in our own day-to-day -day lives. All this we pray in the name of the transfigured Christ. Amen. Joining with generations who have gone before us, let us affirm our faith with these ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, 
and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On this last Sunday before Lent, let us come together in reflection and prayer, bringing our cares and concerns, thanks and praise to our Lord and Redeemer. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayers. Holy One, it is with quiet, confident, open hearts we come to this time and space of prayer. There are many here who have and do feel overwhelmed with fatigue from the various individual and collective roads that we have been navigating. As we move through this, may we find the courage to be gentle with ourselves and with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, throughout the world, countries are going through difficult times. Unite their leaders and bring their focus onto justice and peace for the people of the earth. Guide with your wisdom those who govern until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Bless our own Queen Elizabeth and keep our nation's leaders working for the betterment of this country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, we ask you to bless and protect Reverend Greg, Reverend Doug, and Reverend Brian. Thank you for their caring, their guidance, and their service to you. Be with them all and their families. Keep them safe and well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, hear our prayer for all who are in need. Heal the sick and the injured. Especially be with Margaret Kelly and Jim Joy and others in our parish or those that are on our hearts. Give strength to those that are fighting COVID. Be with those in hospital or be with those being cared for at home. Bring comfort to those that are waiting for test results or are having to self-isolate because they've been compromised. Be with our elderly in care homes. Be with those who feel isolated. Be with those that feel alone. Bless the people who are caring for these people, doctors, nurses, care workers, family members. Be with all that are on our hearts and in our minds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, in our parish, we especially pray for Velma Reeves, Reverend Brian and Karen Rivers, besides people encounters. In the diocese, we pray for the Deanery of North Vancouver, the Reverend Patrick Blaney, Regional Dean, the Echo Justice Unit, the Reverend Margaret Marquard, the Reverend Gail Newell, and the administrators of the Anglican Inter Initiatives Funds, in our Companion Diocese of the Northern Philippines, we pray for our partner churches of St. Andrew's Mission, Padiakin, and St. Cyril of Jerusalem Mission, Babasing, the Reverend Lancio Sophia. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, the resurrection of life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you and have gone on before us. Raise us one day with them to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Loving God, you have made all races and nation to be one family, and you have sent Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your spirit on the whole creation and hasten the coming of your reign of justice and love among the nations of the world. 
God of love, grant our prayer. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. God welcomes sinners and invites them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, as we prepare to sing our offertory hymn on this Transfiguration Sunday, we celebrate the light of Christ in this world. Blessings to all of you who have let that light of Christ continue to shine in your lives and those who have continued to support this community so that we may continue to witness to the light of Christ. Blessings to all who have supported each other through prayer, our pastoral care, checking in with each other. Blessings to all of you who have continued the ministry in this church for all ages. Blessings to all who have continued to support the stuff behind the scenes, um, administrative work, uh, work through the altar guild, work through uh, the different leadership positions we have. Blessings to all of you who have continued to support the upkeep of our building and property. Thank you to all who contribute through the Canada Helps icon on the website or by mailing in or dropping off your donations at the office. You make this ministry possible so that for years to come, we can continue to be a witness to the light of Christ. God be with you and let us sing together.
Holy God, receive all we offer you this day and bring us to that radiant glory which we see in the transfigured face of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give knowledge of salvation in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new, and bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to light and life. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
Holy God, we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ. May we who are partakers of this table reflect his life in word and deed, that all the world may know his power to change and save. We ask this in his name. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our service today. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, we have a few announcements, and so I thought what I would do is do them in date order. That might sort of make it a little easier, given that we're just coming into a busy time of the year again. This coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and Reverend Greg will, has said that he will have the Ash Wednesday evening service. It will be recorded and it will be posted um, for 7 o'clock p.m., on Wednesday evening. So the normal eight o'clock streamed evening prayer will not be there. There will be the Ash Wednesday available, the Ash Wednesday service available instead. So please um, tune in for that. Again, a lovely service, okay? On Thursday, to let everybody know that there will not be uh, Friends in Scripture this Thursday and the Lent, nor will there be the Lenten series. Um, this Thursday will be just a lovely, quiet day for that stuff. Um, the Lenten series will start the Thursday after. And so in the normal time slot of Friends in Scripture, so Thursdays starting the 25th will be the Lenten series, and uh, that will be at 1.30 in the afternoon. So, um, so yeah, so join that. That's probably a good... I guess about six sessions or whatever as we go through Lent um, should be a really good series. So tune into that one Thursday on Thursday, starting the 25th. On the 20th, um, uh, uh, Alex, um, Alexandria Culver and uh, Wendy um, Ignabidian have gotten together and are putting on a baby shower via Zoom um, for uh, the Milton's first a uh, child who is coming into the world pretty soon. And so first childs are always, they're always the toughest, aren't they? Um, and so please, uh, please think of joining the baby shower. The Zoom will be available for you. It is four o'clock on uh, Saturday the 20th. And they would just love you to come in and say hello and support and um, and do that in um, in times like this. It's a, it's a wonderful time to be able to celebrate a new life. So that's coming up. And what else do we have? Oh, our Lenten focus. The Lenten focus um, on our two missions that we pray for every week in the Philippines. We will be giving you more information on that as we kind of get into Lent. We're doing a bunch of research in the background to find out sort of exactly where in the Philippines on the two missions are and um, and uh, also calling on some expertise um, from a couple of parishes around us that have a number of people in their uh, parish from that part of the world. And so, uh, so stay tuned. We're going to have some really good information on that. Our last announcement is around Vestry. Our vestry meeting will be at 11 o'clock um, next Sunday, the 21st. It'll be at 11 o'clock. We're trying to go out. We're hoping to really keep it to an hour. We ask that as many people tune in as possible. The There will be the Zoom invite and all that contact information will be sent out um, this week so that people have it. If you turn into tune into the service and you are very well aware that this, the vestry meeting is coming up, but you don't kind of do the Zoom thing. There are phone numbers that you can call in via. And so we ask that if you are interested in doing that, and we would love you to do that if you can, that you can call into Liz in the parish office during the week, and she will be able to give you a phone number that you can call in for 11 o'clock 
and be able to join the meeting. It will be a little bit different this year, uh, that's for sure. But nonetheless, it will be, um, it's important to come in, hear about what's going on. If you have any questions, obviously it's easier to kind of deal with questions if they come in earlier, um, particularly in the Zoom environment. Um, opening up Zoom to when you have a lot of people tuning in to be able to have questions back and forth is clunky, I guess is a good way. And so if you do have some questions after you've read the booklet, the booklet would have been emailed out to people on our email list and would have gone out just this past week. And my understanding is that people who are who are not on the email list, but we mail things to, that it was mailed out. So please have a look at those. If you have any questions, please farm them into either one of the wardens or to Greg directly or into the into the parish office, and um, and we will try to address those during the meeting. The financial statements will be coming out very soon. I'm we're hoping to get those going. There has been a couple of glitches with the system we use, uh, Power Church, but we think we've got those ironed out. So we're hoping to get finals of the financial statements out um, really ASAP, I guess. And once again, if you look down those two things, if you have some questions, please, please, please bring them forward um, prior to the meeting and sort of, um, and, and let's kind of have those conversations. And then and then we can, um, it just sort of, it makes for better answers and more clarity and uh, particularly in a, in a Zoom meeting environment for this year. So yeah, so a busy week coming up, um, quite frankly, and, um, but we hope you enjoy it. And for those of you who are gonna do Shrove Tuesday at home, I hope you enjoy your pancakes or crepes or waffles or whatever your choice is. But um, hope you have a lovely week and join us again next Sunday. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.